Hello, my name is Ekel O'Hara, and this is the Future Fiction Factory. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, there is a revolution going on. But not only is there a revolution going on, but there are revolutions inside of revolutions going on. Did you know that you can take Code Interpreter and use it inside of, Ch of ChatGPT4? and you could use Claude because it also uses files and you can kind of use them in the same way. Now, we all know that Code Interpreter has a bit of a flaw where you lose the information as you go on. So a lot of people have been gravitating towards Claude. I want to take a friend's model. He built, his name's Stryker and he built this thing called the GPT-4 Code Interpreter Beat Generation. And this was revised on August 7th. It's a document. I will have it in the description. And if you are confused about any of the ways that Code Interpreter works or any of that stuff, there will be actual videos linked inside of uh, inside of the actual document over to the Future Fiction Academy and over to the Nerdy Novelists to help you kind of fill out your entire repertoire when it comes to working with a code interpreter and maybe even doing the same thing inside of Claude. I was watching one of Jason's videos, the Nerdy Novelists, and he had a very interesting and compelling super prompt in a way to kind of go back into it over and over again. So I was thinking maybe, just maybe, we could use some of those very same concepts and also this code interpreter beat generation document. Let me show you the document right here. If you click and make a copy, this is your way to get a copy of this and up uh, this updated version is made so that the AI asks questions and we guide it. Be prepared for a back and forth conversation telling GPT-4, I'm also gonna try and do this in Claude, which files are most important, even typing in how you imagine the scene or the POV, uh, what the POV is. It's a different way of creating beats for sure. If anyone knows good prompts to create guardrails, I would greatly appreciate it. That will make this prompt sing. Adding guardrails, avoiding weasel words, avoiding contractions, and avoiding pronouns are examples of things that can be incorporated. I agree with that. And as a matter of fact, if you have watched any of our videos lately, a lot of us have been really touting the fact that they don't want you to use uh, certain things like contractions and also pronouns. There is a uh, issue that you want to keep it pure. You want things to stay kind of straight and on the straight and narrow. Now, I think that you could possibly work out, uh, build your beats this way, either in Code Interpreter or inside of ChatGPT. And if you did that, you would be able to then feed those into something like the Super Prompt, which is something that Jason's been uh, fiddling with that I believe came up in the forums, which are over at Nerdy Novelist over on the Discord server. I will have a link in the video in the bottom of this video for that. So we're going to use this to create something uh, robust in our beats. We want good, strong beats to create a long narrative. If you use Code Interpreter in a way that creates beats that are very comprehensive, then when you feed them into Claude and that super prompt, they're even more robust and give you those 3,000 words that you're looking for. It's very exciting. So let's get started on this. I start with changing custom instructions in the lower left. Next to my name, I'm a novelist and I write fan, uh, fantasy fiction and so on and so forth, okay? 
and you want to make sure that these are very very much put in there modern not too flowery focus on showing not telling and then i have a i have another i also have a prompt that i will put a link to as a google document about that prompt also that you can also put into your custom instructions that will make it feel like it's an editor too so you know we have been really working on these custom instructions and if you use them correctly it will almost always give you what you want but you have to be specific in even your custom instructions so that you can almost fine tune it so that it does what you want it to do. We're gonna open GPT-4 and turn on code interpreter. Do not copy over any, okay. So back in the day you had, used to have to turn on code interpreter, but you don't have to actually do that anymore. Don't copy over any of these all caps italicized uh, instructions. They are just for you to easily see what is meant for the AI and what is meant for you. So anything with big letters, don't use. They are your instructions, not for the AI. Users need to create a folder called story information. And in that folder, place a blank plain text document named instructions and put the following text in the document. You are an epic writer of fantasy or whatever your genre is. After reviewing the story information directory, you have unzipped and have summarized the files so you know them and don't need to guess at the content. Your job is to create 12 beats per chapter. A beat is the smallest unit of a story. It assists in the rhythm, pace, and intensity of the story by forcing actions, decisions, and emotional reactions from characters to move the plot forward. Make sure each beat has enough detail to write 150 words, e.g. begin in Sarah's home where we see her, or if you don't want to use pronouns, if where we see Sarah drinking a cup of coffee and reading the paper. Sarah hears a loud boom and rushes to the window where Sarah sees an explosion in the distance, she panic, uh, Sarah panics and runs around the house looking for the rest of, uh, rest of the family. Beats should expand each chapter with finer detail. In each beat, include the chapter POV, scene location, world building, correct characterization, and embellish this information so that the details are specific and help the AI write a more detailed novel. I don't know if you understood what just happened there, but there was an example given. If you want AI to work well with what you do, it is best to give it some type of example, something to kind of gleam onto so that it can push something forward. A lot of times when I build my templates, I have a tendency to take a lot of other different things that I want to appear in my template or in, in my framework. And I give that as an example of things that I want it to use to extrapolate from. It is not to, it, a lot of times it uses whatever your genre is and then it will change everything about the prompt in order to adhere to your genre or the scenario or whatever it is. So a very exciting, very interesting way to look at that. And the, it's a very cool way to do that. If an outline exists, use that as the main source of information, but refer to story information when needed. If a beat sheet exists in story information, avoid deleting any beats, but embellish and expand these beats to create 12 total beats per chapter. Do not combine chapters. Prompt for more information if you cannot create 12 beats for story information, uh, from story information per chapter. Ask any questions you need before starting each chapter. 
break each chapter into 12 beats using the following formatting. And this is where you are given an example again. As usual, you have to make sure that when you are in something like pseudo write that you have the formatting correct and in order for it to take the formatting correct in pseudo write you should probably follow this particular format now it says avoid beat one beat two etc and just use numbers when displaying the beats remember to prompt me when uh, with any questions to flush out the beats striker's whole point of this was to give you the opportunity to go back and forth and back and forth with the information and your beats. So I'm making a video about it and I wanted to show you this document, show you what it's actually kind of what it means and have you experiment with it. This is the document, the document of the day the code interpreter beat generation machine, y'all. It's very, very clever. And when we went over it, I had to go back and forth and I was messing with it. And we really had an opportunity to refine it in the uh, forums. And I believe that this is the latest version of it. Uh, I hope it's the latest version of it actually. That's, I mean, I want you to walk, go through this document, dig deep into it, enjoy this journey, and take Jason's video that he just made about the super prompt and combine it with my video here that has this document where you can build out those beats that are gonna go into the super prompt. So I'm telling you, this is it, y'all. This is it! And that's that for that. I hope that you have enjoyed this little walk into a much richer beat world. This is the future, y'all. I am beyond happy for what we are about to experience with this brand new system that we are building right in front of. Everyone is building this right in front of everyone. This is the code interpreter beat generation machine and my name is Ikel O'Harrod and this is the future fiction factory and I would like you to like subscribe and if you have any questions about the about this document about any of the stuff then come on y'all let's get that party started and I will see you in the next video Thank you.